Welcome to the Books, Beards, Booze podcast, where we talk books, drink booze, and have beards. All right. As always, I am Bob Tells by Bob. I'm the Ask the Podcast, Derek. I'm unpaid intern, Tanya. Good I God. really wanted to super fan Good it, God. but I am unpaid intern, You know, Tanya. for the threebies, we might as well let you do the super fan because... Mm, hard no. Hard no. No, no. I'm no. patron Tanya, investor you ha- Tanya. No, you don't have your suspenders. Oh, Jesus. I have many hats. It's like you don't Why would, why would you not wear a full oh size hat? Oh my God. Yuck. I said it. I was prepared for it this time. Oof. Hmm. All right. So as we, as you heard yesterday, you heard our individual, what our favorites of the last year were. So now you get to hear, can I get some dramatic music? Oh. Dun, 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 There we go. <laughs> That's better. That's better. <laughs> I don't um, think I can do any more of that. <laughs> the, yeah, we only get like seven seconds, I think. <laughs> That's um, it. So, yeah. It's the Three Bs. Wow, 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 wow. It's where we award the best in four categories this year. Plus the one that I'm going to add at the beginning. Oh, shit. Oh, snap. This has been sprung Ooh. on us. Oh, yeah. So there might be five Three Bs. Um, well, there right. really only needs to be three Three Bs because it's a Three B. Tanya, stop what? making sense. What? Three, what six, you... or nine. Three, six, or nine. That way it's divisible by three because it's a three B. Tanya. Huh. All right. So moving on. This is, why, this is why you don't get paid. <sighs> this is why I don't get paid. All right. <laughs> so we have sat down together and discussed what we think is the best in each category for the past year. Now, before yes. we get into the real stuff, let's, yeah. let's just jump in here to it. And. The question is, see, you, we were supposed to do it on the last episode. Oh, oh, but womp. Okay. And the answer is, or here's here's the question. It's one of the questions that you are going to have, so we can go with that one. Okay. First. Okay. The best beard of the year. Oh, that's that's one I of the know. four. That's one of the I four know. categories. That's what okay. I'm saying. Oh, yeah. okay. oh, but we didn't do an individual beard. Yeah. So now oh, we're just doing yeah, we didn't beards. do. Well, yeah. Oh, we did do it because it wasn't written on my list. Yeah. I wrote it in extra. Mm-hmm. All right. So yeah. So yeah. Here's your bonus content. So what was your individual, your personal favorite beard of the year for the last year? There's only one answer. Mine. Because any self-respecting man would love his beard. That's a good answer. That's a good answer. It's a quality answer. It quality is. Answer. It's the right answer. Quality. That's the kind of answer that spits in the face of Big Razor, and yep. I like it. Mm-hmm. Fuck Big Razor. Fuck, Fuck Big Razor. All right. What you got? My individual beard. Yeah. Gritty. We are pro gritty. Yeah, good, just... good choice. Uh, I I went uh, James Harden because yeah. it had to be someone that we talked about on the podcast. We yeah. said that. So yeah. James Harden had the best beard of anyone that we talked about on the podcast. I felt like yeah, he does have a quality um, beard. He does have a quality beard. Um, Bob, quality. this is the one area you just lack self confidence in. Well, I didn't. I, I'll be honest. I didn't think oh, of your, I was your, make a your joke, answer was the didn't. correct answer, yeah. except that obviously my beard. But no, um, but no. He all wears, right, he runs so, that cremo in there. All right, makes it great. <laughs> Yeah, I my the beard balm I use, <laughs> the beard wash, looks like um, male ejaculate. And it's called Cremo. It's called Cremo. <laughs> and it's it and you rub it into your great. beard. It's uh, it's real. <laughs> yeah, it's real awkward. Um, all right, it's great. So, <laughs> all right. So what we it. we sat down and we discussed it. Uh, what is the beard of the year? And after careful consideration, yes, we decided. I'm handing Tanya an envelope. Open the mm. envelope. Russell, Russell, Wait. Russell. Wait, there we go. Yeah, that probably someone just started cussing us. <laughs> maybe I ought not to put it right by the microphone. Maybe, maybe not. Okay. And How are you so inept when you're not drunk? I'm just bad at life, Good. I guess. Okay. Oh, beard of the year. Beard of the year goes to gritty. You damn right. Best. Gritty is awesome. Gritty is Have you the, seen that Twitter? The wild eyed insanity love of Beardum that encapsulates his podcast. He is the most fun beard to watch. Boat of gravy. Boat of gravy, yeah. No, my favorite is like <laughs> keep your eyes open while you sleep tonight, bird. <laughs> like just <laughs> idly threatening other What's mascots. What's your favorite Thanksgiving food? Boat. Of gravy. Well, do you like white meat or dark meat? Boat of gravy. Oh, he's great. He's yeah, awesome. it's great. It's great. I love it. Chaotic. Yeah, 
Oh yeah, no, he's slightly menacing. Yeah, it's it's a slight air of menace that I think I, I love most about him. I love it. All right, so mm. we on the podcast, obviously, we do short reads. Yes, we've done a lot of them. I think we did. Uh, we probably did like twenty this year. I think twenty short reads. I think is roughly the tally. Yeah, we did fourteen in season one, and I think we did six in season two. That sounds about right. Um, so. We we sat down, we discussed it, and I'm handing a, an envelope to Derek. Uh, oh, listen, listen to that. Uh, okay, and the best short story is the correct answer for once. A Tiny Feast by Chris Adrian. Yay. You damn right. Polite golf clap. Yay. Because it's tiny, so you have to do tiny claps. So we all... Tiny cancer-filled kid claps. Uh-huh. <laughs> we, we, we shittily call it, like, we can never remember the name of the story, so we keep calling it the Cancer Kid story. He died of, like... It's a tiny feast. Leukemia yeah, it's a tiny whatever. feast uh, by tiny Chris feast. Adrian. This was the second one we ever did on Damn the podcast. Near, I think it? it was second or third. It was and really it's good. amazing. So good. Uh, it's heart-wrenching, just gets, just brings the emotion... Hit smash in the face like it mushroom stamps you with emotion. I think there was like a book that he put out. He did. It's in my. I, I yes. was cleaning up my TBR and I saw that. I was like, wait a minute, is that a built upon? Yeah, tiny it, it fe- no, It's not. Well, it features uh, titanium Oberon. Oberon. Yeah. 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 Yep. So um, yeah, real good. Uh, if you haven't read it, do yourself feast. a favor. Go to bookspeechboots dot com. Click on short reads. There's a link to it. Uh, right there um okay do you want to go ahead and do this yeah so go ahead and do this okay because i can't so, read i can't read what you wrote uh this is Derek's bonus category oh uh, well, oh then we'll do it last i thought it said Derek's brown cat and i was like <laughs> why <laughs> why would Derek have a cat i was like i don't, under- cat, the I don't cat understand outside is black. I, I don't understand a brown cat reference okay We've we'll do we'll do it awesome. we'll do it uh We'll do it right before we do our final category. What's right. the final category? Book of the year. Book of the year. So, booze of the year. Uh, this engendered some pretty good discussion. Clyde Mays was in the running. Yeah. Uh, we didn't really let uh, unpaid intern Tanya vote on this one because she came in late on trying the liquors True. for the most part. She True. really tried very few of what we actually I moderated their very intense discussion. Yeah. So... What we Tally settled on votes. was Interstellar. <laughs> the two votes. Yeah, the two yeah. votes. Interstellar Brewing Company's seasonal. It's a caramel apple ginger beer. Uh so fucking tasty. It was like good. I, I, it was I uh, real good. crew hat. Well, no, uh, Goat House has it, mm-hmm. so we could go to Goat House and get one tonight. I and mean, we're not going to because yeah. I'm not leaving my house again. No. But uh, if we're at the goat house right now. I would be ordering the fuck out of that because it is so good. It's a cider, but made with ginger beer. So it's got that awesome cider taste without being super sweet. Like it's not. But then it also doesn't have the kind of bitter that you get from like a beer. Or yeah, like that yeah. Either. It's great. It's a incredibly smooth yet not super sweet cider. So you could sit there and seven percent. So you can easily sit there and get oh, like yeah. the problem with cider is you. It's hard for bigger Maybe. guys to get yeah. drunk before you just get a headache from how sweet it is. Mm-hmm. This stuff could drink. I'll be honest with you. Like four would get me go. Would get me going right. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, no problem. Yeah. So Interstellar Brewing Company's caramel apple seasonal. Runner up because the caramel it's a, it is it a is seasonal. seasonal. Yeah. Uh, I think we said the ginger colada. I think that was yeah, which yeah. was really surprising for me. Well, because like you you really like the space mule because you like lime, but I don't really like lime. Yeah. So that was like I think you I think I remember you saying you like the space mule I liked more, than one the of them more than the ginger colada. Ginger but I want to say that we basically just had our number one and number two switch. You enjoyed yeah. the mojito. I remember. No, that. that was the one. That was the mojito. That was the you one. enjoyed the mojito because yeah. I did because I wanted to like the space mule, but I didn't like okay. it as yeah. much. Yeah. Yeah. For me, my my number one was the seasonal. My number two was the ginger colada, mm-hmm. and not just because I'm a ginger. It helped though. Wow, I I always forget you're a ginger. It makes so much sense. It does. You don't have a soul. That's why you're always wrong. Ouch, harsh. So Ouch. Inter- I feel for, better when I make these connections and I remember why for why our, things are the way they are. For our listeners who don't really want to maybe go back through our extensive back catalog, Interstellar Brewing is from Alabaster, Alabaster Alabama. Yes. 
It's a great place. Yep. If you're within driving distance, you well, you can get. Really they do have. Uh, they the beers are distributed outside of Alabaster. Like I said, you can get it at Goat House. I That's know in Montgomery. You, you can get it at Crew in Montgomery. Uh, in bottles, they I think they have first contact there. You can get uh, Renfro's uh, grocery stores carry it. Um, so yeah, they mm. actually just uh, they just uh, have done a new one. Uh, they've done a sour. Mm. Uh, I just saw that they were just brewing a sour. I don't know if it's I enjoy a, sours. I don't know if it's available for purchase yet, but mm. it's like the I'm first the, the first batch of it. We need to just go up there again. We need to make a trip up there Whenever. Mm-hmm. soon. Yeah. Like field trip. Yeah, go up there and get a couple flights. Six dollars. What for, they should, shouldn't they be rockets? Because it's interstellar. It should be like a rocket instead of a flight. You know what they serve it to you on? What? A UFO. Bet. Oh, that's adorable. Yeah. It's a, I love it's it. A, it's a UFO with five little slots oh, for... Oh, that's I, yeah, awesome. It's great. I love it's great. Their, uh, their... Their purple coat like, club thing? No, I just... Well, that too. But I just like their um, their advertising, like their posters and stuff like that that are like yeah. drawn like... Like pulp, sci-fi, yeah. Com- yeah, it's great. That's like great. The place is awesome. We, we need to head up there soon. Yes. Um, okay. All right, so Derek's brown cat. <laughs> so, my bonus category, and I did this because I hope I remember I, this next year because it's still going to be Derek's brown cat. Because I I needed to be able to mention these yeah. more, despite the fact they didn't win the categories that okay. I mentioned them in for my personal thing yeah. previously. Yes. So the bonus best world building that we Ooh. went through this year. So this is your individual. Well, because well, I wasn't the, consulted. The, who did the best world building? Yeah, hmm. because yeah, my favorite world building of the year that I experienced was Jade City. Yeah, but Jade City didn't quite beat out the book that I was my best book of the year. So I wanted to mention it again because best I feel like building. the story itself was pretty straightforward, yeah. but the world that it built around the story was one so of my real. favorites. It was, it was fascinating. Yeah, yeah. I, I could agree with that. And then my honorable mention was Carnival 9 because that was super cool. There just wasn't... It probably could have beaten Jade City if it wasn't a short story yeah. because there wasn't enough to tell. But that was also part of the charm. Is it the, or not, I don't know if charm is the right word, but yeah. part that of the... That was a charming, charmingly yeah. depressing story. <laughs> yeah, but it just didn't have enough to it to be able to match up with... But those were two of my favorite things I read all year. They just yeah. didn't make the best category. Right. This is your B-sides yeah. instead of your best yeah. ofs. Well, but, and, but, and, really. and the D-sides, reason yeah. that I mention it is because they were both really strong in and world building yeah. so it was a way I could link them together so. okay I like it I like it um, I could definitely agree with Jade City world building uh, I would also say Lions of al did incredible world building yeah, as well right. similar to Jade City in t- like in just because again like Jade City it's functionally speaking it's earth with flair mm-hmm. and that's more or less what uh, Lions of al does it's historical earth with flair so, um, 29 yeah. pieces of flair. Yes. Um, Definitely okay. Fucking bells. So it was festive. What is the best book of the year? Mm. And the, the caveat here was it didn't have to come out this year. It's just a book that we all read and all loved and all agree was the fucking best. If you have any sense and have listened to more than one single episode of this podcast, you know it's got to be. You should know that it is definitely. I'm gonna tiny light drum roll on the table so that Bob doesn't cut my fingers off. There we go. Look it at that. Probably sounds awful. Look at that tiny drum roll. Yeah. Um, <laughs> King of the Wild by Nicholas Yes. Yeah. Uh, amazing. Treat yourself. Go get it right now. Do it's it. the best fucking book we've read all year. It's so fun, and there's so much heart in it. And it's just, I read fewer. I did not read a better book this year that I had more fun with. I have read better constructed books, but they were not as enjoyable. Yeah, yeah. that's the thing. Is like, like I had it, so much fun yeah. reading and Kings of the Wild. A lot of the books that... It, I read, and probably even more of the ones Bob reads aren't really fun a lot of the time. Yeah, you like. Oh the, man, I just yeah. uh, let's see. The last three books I've read have are like uh, Bird Box. Oh God, not fun. Uh, Notice Fra Two. No, not fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've read The Terror by Dan Simmons. Oh God, not fun. Yeah. Um, Library at Mount Char. Jesus fucking Christ. Like I, I the no. fact that I haven't killed myself in the past month has been quite <laughs> quite the statement. Um, 
I'm ready to I'm ready to hit something a little more lighthearted. Yeah. So, but I also did I spice that up. I read uh, the Lost Temple of Synthesis by it was the Dungeoneers book. Fucking hilarious, fucking great. Love still fucking, not as good as still yeah. Fucking love wild. Kings yeah. of the Wild, y'all, and and like I really enjoyed the the follow up Bloody Rose. I would really but... like y'all to read the dun- at least one of the Dungeoneers books so we can have a discussion on it because I can compare and contrast. Well, well, I mean we could do it that way, but just because I really like the book, yeah. but I understand it's it's it has a pro- what I see is it has one glaring problem. Dungeoneers. Dungeoneers. Okay. It's great. I love it, but mm-hmm. there is a problem with each of the books I have read. Okay. And it's it's the same problem in all three books. Okay. So, uh, it's really. Well, but they're, they're great. Just throw they're that on great. my ever growing TBR. Well, it's a short read though. They're not long okay. books, so especially when you have Kindle Limited. I while do. you have it, just, while I have it, just dive into a Dungeoneers book. Well, that kind of defeats the purpose of me clearing off my KU list so I can stop playing, stop paying ten bucks a month. It's worth it though if you get books like Dungeoneers. Yeah, but I have a hundred and like fifty other books that I own. I don't it's need not to continue my fault that you bought dumb books. I bought so many books this year. It's and some of them are just not good. A lot you, of she still keeps talking about. Oh, I'm, going, I'm going to go back and finish Atlas Shrugged. I'm going to. Like, why? 2019, like my why? No. no, my upper challenge no. is to just finish that godforsaken terrible oh. book. That way, when this is the same thing with Dune, I didn't like it, but I had to I had to spite finish it. So I'm gonna spite finish Atlas Shrugged. There's a difference though. Dune's actually good. Atlas Shrugged is. Every, there's a ton of people who think Atlas Shrugged is great. Yes, and they currently are in the Freedom Caucus of the Senate and are just pooping on our world. But Move maybe on. maybe I can have. A actually, my dad is one of my dad's favorite books. Yeah, but. My friend Kelly, she's she enjoys it. I mean, have you all read Perks of Being a Wallflower? <clears throat> I haven't. No, Neither I know. We sh- I know Sherpa. Her face just yeah. Looked. No, that's amazing. I think y'all would both really like yeah, that book. We, sh- we should we should read that this year. We should all read the Perks of Being a Wallflower. Okay. Yeah. All right. So now that we've gone completely off the rails, um, yeah. So congratulations to our three B's winner, Gritty, Interstellar Brewing Company, Chris Adrian, and Nicholas Eames. Hey! Congratulations. Uh, your three B is um, hypothetical, and hypothetical and imaginary. Yeah. You can make a you can make an icon and just like Twitter it to them. Oh, because you know Nicholas yeah. Eames, he has yeah, listened to our podcast. He has. He yeah. retweeted us. It was he great. Did. Listen to our podcast. And I know we Daniel from Interstellar. He keeps yeah. an eye on us. Yeah, let's so. make let's make a little. 3B, like the Dundies. Yeah, it's the, the three Bs. Bs. The three Bs. Make them a... I like it. I'd icon. mail it to them if I had an address. Don't be creepy. Yeah. Well, Gritty, Gritty's on Twitter. Well, yeah. Tweet yeah. tweet Tom's at creepy. Gritty. You can tweet yeah. at all these people. I bet. I wonder if Chris... Ad- I'm sure Chris Adrian has a Twitter. Why wouldn't he? Yeah. Everyone does. We'll find out. I mean, we do. You need it for business. Tales by Bob at Twitter or whatever, or at Tales by Bob. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All our social media is Tales by Bob. We have a website. We do. Booze. Booze. Check it out. Com. We should, uh, I should add a page for 3B's winners. Booksbeardsbooze.net. It's dot com. What? <laughs> Remember Homestar Runner from way back in the day? It's like, yeah, homestarrunner.net. Yeah. It's dot com. I loved that. It was wow. so great. All right. <laughs> uh, so this is uh, <laughs> not the last time you're going to hear us this year because we're about to record our final episode. What the fuck else are we recording? Our Dune, our Dune wrap up, but that's real short. That's just basically Tony saying I'm sorry. Um, Why would she apologize? Sh- anyway, we don't want we don't want spoilers. Um, but in case you don't listen to that bonus episode, uh, you know, just it's been a great year. We love y'all. Thank you for listening. Yeah. Um, it means a lot that y'all pay attention. It does. And uh, I hope that the y'all are checking out these authors and brewers that we're hitting up because they're putting in work as well. What are uh, your long... favorite things, listener? What are your favorite books? What did oh, you? Yeah, what was what, your favorite yeah, thing this year? If you if you were doing the three B's, what would you do? What was your favorite booze, beard, short story, and book? We'd love did to you hear. listen to our? Did you do the short stories? You can, what was your favorite? Yeah, the, you, the correct one is Catskin. But I would no. you can leave if, out the best beard for the year because Bob's gonna get really embarrassed when you guys keep saying, Derek, yeah. your beard." Your best. favorite book, just, short story, and booze of the year. Hit us up, and we'll read them out on the next. Uh, on the. What are you looking forward to reading in 2019? Yeah, get at us. 
Let us know. We want, to, we want to hear from y'all. What I need is more books on my TBR. Right. Like, um, so <laughs> gives me more. After but yeah, it's an been an hour of complaining. I don't need more. Books. Right. It's been I mean, a blasty okay. blast. Had a great time. Thank y'all. Uh, happy holidays. And when y'all next hear from us, <laughs> in the bonus episode, um, we'll be with all new gear. Theoretically. No, it will be, goddammit. <laughs> Allegedly. 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 Also, go watch Letter Kitty. All right. Love y'all. Go forth and grow a great beard. Merry New Year. <laughs>